So I want to introduce um, a concept called free body diagrams. All right, sometimes we call this an F, B, D. Okay, a free body diagram is um, a representation of an object as a particle showing all of the forces on that object. So, uh, Okay, so um, first I'm going to lay out the um, steps for drawing a free body diagram, and then I'll show you um, uh, three examples. Okay, so uh, the steps here, drawing a free body diagram. All right, let me preface this by saying... Um, a free body diagram is useful in um, ultimately applying Newton's second law and determining uh, how something is moving. All right, I mean, it makes sense if we need to um, figure out how something is moving. We need to know what forces are acting on it and in what direction. All right, this is just a formal way of approaching that. So um, first is to um, identify. all of the forces on the object of interest. All right, drawing a picture of the situation is a great way to start that. All right, and then looking at contact and non-contact or long-range forces. All right, two is to draw a coordinate system. Right, so choose an X and Y. Right, this can be tilted. Right, and you can usually use the problem to dictate uh, whether you draw this uh, straight up and down or straight uh, or uh, at an angle. All right, then we represent the object. as a point at the origin. All right, so you imagine that the object is sitting at the origin of your uh, coordinate system. And then you um, draw um, all of the forces on the object as vectors um, starting at the origin. All right, and let me mention here that um, it's useful to um, to be able to break down these vectors into component forms, right? And that's why you determine a coordinate system for this. Right. So you want to include angles for those vectors so that you can break them into, uh, into components. So um, let me introduce a couple situations and then we'll draw the free body diagram for these situations. Okay, so here's a uh, first situation. We have a chandelier. Um, we already have the picture drawn. All right, and we've identified uh, three forces, gravity and then um, the tension of the two ropes that are touching the chandelier. All right, so uh, we're going to draw uh, set of axes here, maybe straight up and down, and right and left makes sense, we'll label this as X and Y, 
we're going to call our uh, chandelier the um, the origin, the point at the origin here, and then we're going to draw these three forces as vectors on this uh, on this uh, set of axes. Okay, so um, gravity is easy. That's pointing directly downward. So we have F sub G. Um, and then we have these two tensions, T1 and T2, um, both pointing at angles. So maybe we have one pointing up this way, T1, one pointing off that way, T2. Okay, and this is, uh, this is our free body diagram. Okay, so um, maybe let's look at a, a second situation. Let's say we're looking at a monkey on a branch. Okay, again, um, you can see this monkey is sitting on an inclined br branch, and you have um, long range forces, gravity, and then these two contact forces with the branch. You have friction and a normal force. So maybe in this system, it makes sense to tilt your axes. Right. In this system, you could tilt your axes, so maybe y is this direction, and x is this direction. Right. And our monkey is a dot at the origin. So, um, again, gravity always points down, right? but down relative to Earth. So, gravity in this case is pointing this way. So that's F sub G. Um, and then we have these two contact forces to draw the normal force and a frictional force. And um, the normal force is maybe the easier one to think about. Um, the normal force is preventing the monkey from going through the surface. And remember, a normal force always points perpendicular to the surface. So the normal force points this direction. So that's F subnormal. Okay, and uh, the frictional force, remember, frictional force opposes motion, right? So if we think about what does this, uh, what does gravity want this monkey to do? Gravity wants to pull the monkey down the, the branch. So friction is opposing that. Friction is keeping the monkey on the branch. So friction is acting up the incline in this case. Okay, so this is our free body diagram. And again, I mentioned to include some angles. Um, if we had an angle of this incline, uh, we could include that here. Maybe that would be here. Put a theta on that. And then you can see I can break gravity into x and y components. And maybe that's a logical next step if we were going to do a problem with this. Okay, and finally, um, I have a third example here of a child um, on a sled being pulled up an incline. All right, and we can identify these forces. I've got uh, gravity, uh, which in this case I'm calling W vector, right? Stands for weight. Okay. Uh, I also have um, these two uh, uh, forces with the surface, right? There's this frictional force and a normal force. And I also have tension on the sled. So I can draw axes again. Um, anyway, or, um, again, I can choose um, whatever orientation of axes I want. But I'm going to use the problem to guide me. Uh, maybe it makes sense to tilt my axes again. So here's y. Here's x. My object is uh, this sled at the origin. And I can draw these three, four, uh, four uh, force vectors, rather. So uh, the weight acts directly down. So that's something like this. Right? Um, tension is um, pulling this sled up the hill. Maybe that's acting um, directly along the incline. 
right? That's something that would have to be specified in the problem. So that's force due to tension. Right, and then I have these two interaction forces. Again, the normal force is easy to figure out. Normal force is uh, um, uh, acting perpendicular to the surface and pointing upward. Right, so that's F sub normal. And we have to ask again, um, which direction f should friction point? Uh, we know that it's going to be um, parallel to the incline, um, but also has to oppose the motion, right? So if this child is being pulled up the hill, friction is going to act down the hill. Right. So now these are the four forces, and this is our um, free body diagram. All right. Again, um, we'll be looking at uh, the next step for this. This is the setup for applying Newton's second law. So uh, we'll see that next time.